Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. First up today, I wanna to touch on this tweet from Gary Black talking about deferred revenue, something we'll talk about a little bit more in depth here in the coming weeks. He shared that note from Alex Potter saying, is Tesla losing faith in the timing of full self-driving? Why the loss of faith? Because Tesla slashed its deferred revenue estimate to be recognized over the next 12 months from 1.39 billion to 962 million as of the end of 2021. Simply put, if you're not familiar, deferred revenue is just money that that Tesla has received that it has not yet provided the product or service for that it will do in time. As Tesla provides those products or services, then they can actually recognize that cash received as revenue on the income statement. Deferred revenue is actually a liability on the balance sheet because it's revenue that is not yet earned. Just brief clarifications, there are more inputs to deferred revenue than just FSD revenue. For example, you have access to the supercharger network, internet connectivity, of course FSD, OTA updates, resale value guarantees, which we talked about last week, energy leasing, and some other things as well. Once again, we'll clarify this more in the future. I also wanted to point out in that same note that Gary shared, Potter said in his report that Piper is unconcerned about the software related disclosures Tesla made. Translation, even though Tesla said in its 10K it expects to receive about $450 million less over the next 12 months than originally anticipated, they are not worried about it. And ultimately they really shouldn't be because whether Tesla recognizes that revenue in 2022, 23, or even 24, Ultimately, it will be recognized. It's just a matter of when. And just something simple to point out to you. As you can see on the balance sheet at the end of 2021, we have deferred revenue right here at 1.447 billion. If you go down a little bit, you'll see deferred revenue net of current portion. This is actually the long-term deferred revenue and net of current portion just means that the current portion or deferred revenue that is expected to be recognized over the next 12 months, which is the amount we just mentioned above. So to find Tesla's total deferred revenue, you would take the current deferred revenue just titled deferred revenue right here and add it to the deferred revenue net of the current portion. And that would actually give you Tesla's total deferred revenue. So remember, just deferred revenue is the current portion expected to be recognized over the next 12 months, even though in the footnote, Tesla did say it's expected to be 962 million, not the 1.447. And then deferred revenue net of current portion is the longer term deferred revenue expected to be recognized further than 12 months out. A lot of people are asking if the reduction in expected deferred revenue recognition was due to customer deposits. I don't think that's the case as the way it should work from an accounting standpoint, which Gary Black later did clarify you would actually debit cash because remember cash is an asset and a debit account and you would credit customer deposits which is a liability and a credit account so you would increase that with a credit and then ultimately you would move the balance from customer deposits to deferred revenue but that only happens at the time of a sale which hasn't happened yet for the Cybertruck. So to boil this all down and land the plane, no, I do not think Tesla has lost faith in its FSD just because of that reduction in estimated recognized revenue over the next 12 months. Clearly on the Q4 call, Elon was very bullish when it comes to FSD and ultimately there are too many things going into it to make that simple deduction. And once again, ultimately that revenue will be recognized whether it's this year or later. I think this situation is pretty absurd. Let me know if I'm alone. South Korea is investigating possible exaggerated advertising for Tesla's mileage. This coming from South Korea's antitrust regulator investigating Tesla over allegations of exaggerated specifications of the batteries. We plan to hold a meeting to decide the level of sanctions against the automaker. On Tesla's website, it says the Model 3 can go 328 miles. However, listen to this. The KFTC says, however, the range may fall short of that should the temperature drop below freezing. Well, yes, welcome to the world of electric vehicles. This is gonna happen for any automaker, not just Tesla. Not to mention the fact that there are so many things that go into real world range when it comes to tires and payload and driving speed and driving dynamics. The point being, it's impossible for Tesla to post a range that will be directly equivalent in the real world for every single user. It just cannot happen. And the second thing I would add, the KFTC should be taking this up with the EPA not Tesla. We got a new 13G filed by Tesla and Elon, basically just a form that lets shareholders know of any ownership over 5% in the company, and Elon definitely has that. After all of the share sales and exercising, Elon currently has 231,715,000 shares of Tesla, representing a 21.2% stake in the company. Doing the math based on a share price of $915, that's a cool $212 billion in Tesla stock. 
It should also be noted of that 231 million amount, 172 million 600,000 are common stock held by Elon's revocable trust. And the rest is actually going to be a batch of options to purchase 59 million 100,000 shares of common stock exercisable within 60 days of the end of 2021, taking us toward the end of February. A quick message from one of the most timely sponsors I've ever worked with. This is not financial advice. However, masterworks.io is giving savvy investors a way to decorrelate from the stock market. Why might you want to do this? Well, the government has printed unprecedented levels of money via quantitative easing. Inflation fears have since gripped the market and the supply chain issues are seemingly everywhere you look. Masterworks is an awesome project that gives everyone access to the contemporary art market via fractional share ownership. And check this out, Citibank research has shown that contemporary art has the lowest correlation to the stock market of any major asset class and has outperformed in times of inflation. And there's more, contemporary art has outpaced the S&P 500 by 164% from 1995 to 2021. To enter this market before, you basically had to be of the wealthy elite. So I love that Masterworks has opened up this market to people like you and me, and it's really easy to use. Just a few clicks and you can create an account to start searching for your first piece of fine art ownership. And honestly, who doesn't want to tell their friends and coworkers that they own an Andy Warhol or Picasso piece of art? After you invest in an offering, you can either hold your shares until Masterworks sells the artwork or you can sell your shares earlier on the secondary market. So if you'd like to skip the wait list, just use the link in the description below and check out for yourself why some of the smartest investors are so excited about masterworks.io. And on that point, we have to spend a moment talking about this Elon donation because plenty of people are going to say that Elon is just evading taxes. So what's really going on here and who did Elon give that money to? This donation happened November of 2021, which is going to come back into play. The stock at the time was worth $5.7 billion, which would make Elon the second biggest donor of 2021 behind only Bill and Melinda Gates. I personally am all about giving in secret and not doing it publicly. However, certain situations will result in people assuming that a move like this means that money is going to a donor advised fund, which is a very controversial topic and I'll give you the highlights of. Other possible recipients could be the Texas Institute of Technology and Sciences. Get your head out of the gutter. However, to my knowledge, that has not been established yet legally, so this would have to be something that is donated to in the future, which would bring a donor-advised fund into play, which Elon has contributed to in the past. There's also the Musk Foundation and the World Food Program from that tweet storm back also November of last year. Elon made that tweet about a new university October 29th of last year. Two days later, he said if the World Food Program can describe on Twitter how that $6 billion would solve world hunger, he would sell Tesla stock now and do it. To be clear, the WFP followed through and came up with this one-time appeal to billionaires, laying out a plan to use that $6 billion to help solve or reduce the impact of world hunger. $3.5 billion for food and delivery, $2 billion for cash and food vouchers, $700 million for country-specific costs to design and build infrastructure, $400 million for global and regional operations management. Before we go any further, this does not have to be strict tax evasion or strict philanthropy. It can be in the middle, and in this case, it most likely is. Very simply how this would work. Elon donates $5 billion of stock. That stock is not taxed for Elon. Elon would pay $0 in capital gains on this amount of stock rather than selling it and then giving the cash to a charity. Giving shares of stock is actually a very beneficial thing to do for both parties. But there's more. Elon would also get an immediate tax deduction if he's held that stock for more than 12 months, meaning if it's in the long-term category. Whereas if someone has only held shares for less than 12 months, you can only deduct the cost basis of those shares. For example, let's say someone had a billion dollars of stock and then it grew to 5 billion and then they donated the 5 billion. Well, you can only deduct the 1 billion of the cost basis if you only held them for one year. So yes, Elon making a charitable contribution will have significant tax benefits for him given that he might have a tax bill of in the neighborhood of $11 billion for 2021. And just a bit on these donor advised funds to help you fight the FUD because people will undoubtedly bring this up. Unlike family foundations, which are required to distribute 5% of their assets every year, DAFs have no distribution requirements, meaning that billions of dollars earmarked for charity can sit idle for decades 
in these slush funds while by the way they will actually be invested by let's say Vanguard or Fidelity and those fees will actually go to these financial institutions. So yes, it is a win-win for both parties. However, when you have those financial incentives paired with a lack of transparency, you're ultimately going to have some foul play. Further, DAFs are not required to report which funds give money to which causes. Many of these DAF donors leave the fund for their children to ultimately manage and reportedly a quarter of the assets held in DAFs have been distributed to nonprofits in each of the past two years. And yes, Elon has used these before. In 2016, the Musk Foundation actually made its largest disbursement to date, giving $37.8 million to Vanguard Charitable. It's a donor advised fund. Look, Elon has no obligation to share what he's doing with his money, especially when it comes to giving. Once again, I approve doing it in secret. However, in this case, it might be cool for Elon to shed some light on the situation. Elon has made plenty of charitable donations in the past, but they've been in amounts of millions and hundreds of millions. Billions, especially five, is a big figure. So it might be going to a DAF or the Musk Foundation to then be dispersed over time to other organizations. So is Elon evading taxes or doing philanthropic worth? Well, both, and he's smart for doing so. Automotive News shared an interesting article on the chip shortage and how many vehicles will be cut from production estimates. In North America, year to date, there have already been 221,500 vehicles cut from cut from production schedules for the year, and that's expected to rise to 384,700 just in North America, and it's over 1.2 million globally just a few weeks into 2022. Here we have Kansas looking to offer over a billion dollars in incentives to land this company. That company might be Panasonic. If Kansas wins the bid, the factory would land outside of DeSoto, and right now Kansas is in a battle with Oklahoma. Mobileye is planning self-driving shuttles in the US in 2024. These are supposed to feature 12 to 14 seats and no steering wheel or pedal. These vehicles will be operated though in contained geofenced areas and will operate where speed limits are 35 miles per hour or less. Rivian has a big new investor as George Soros bought nearly 20 million shares as of the end of 2021. They were worth about $2 billion at the time or 19.8 million shares. A quick note on my Ben Sullins video response, it's currently taken down. He said he was making some changes, so I'm gonna wait for him to re-upload that, and then we'll go from there with the revised version. Fisker is now accepting reservations for its second product called The Pair. Personal Electric Automotive Revolution, starting price of $29,900 in the US, expected for deliveries in 2024. If you're wondering, well, what about the ocean? It's supposed to start production in November of this year. Reservations for The Pair will be $250 and $100 for the second reservation. Supposed to be produced in Ohio with a, get this, minimum initial production of 250,000 units per year. That being the minimum. Color me skeptical. And some EPA documents give us some more details on the GMC Hummer. The truck will go 329 miles on a single charge with 212.7 kilowatt hours of usable energy. The Hummer will weigh 9,063 pounds and the battery alone weighs 2,923. The total pack size is 246.8 kilowatt hours, meaning the usable capacity is 86% of the total. And yes, David Einhorn is shorting Tesla stock again. However, I think I'm going to write a Twitter thread about this one as there's a lot we can learn from this situation. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.